Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to create this really cool paper texture topography effect inside of Photoshop easily. The great thing about this effect is that you can create it within smart objects and this is a, a way that you can create templates for yourself so if you had a youtube thumbnail or if you had a piece of client work where you needed to add a logo or some information this is a really easy way and a really time saving way of creating a cool effect without having to do the effect every single time you can actually change it all for this you will need photoshop obviously you will also need to go to our sponsors website Envato elements i'll talk a bit more about the sponsor later but you can get this four torn paper textures. This is a really good texture pack because it allows us to have really high definition paper, as you can see, very important to have when doing mock-ups or anything, have these nice paper textures so our typography will look good. What I've done is I've gone ahead and merged one of these groups. These are in groups right now, and you can see that the different sizes, they look a bit different all the way through. And they've really done the work on this really high quality, as you can see when I zoom in. So I'm going to go to number one and I'm going to open it up in the group. And you can see that we've got like a shadow layer here. Now we don't, we want these to kind of be separate still, but I don't want to have this mask on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer on top and just press command E and that will mean that it will sort of merge with the bottom layer and get rid of that mask. So now when we select it, it only selects the paper. That's what we want. I'm going to go ahead to the shadow and just like make that into a actual layer so we can actually get rid of it. It's just a bit quicker and easier. Then with this group, I'm just going to flip it because I prefer it to be the other way around. I'm just going to flip it like this. So what I'm going to do with the paper texture, not with the shadow, I'm going to go ahead and right click and press convert to smart object. This means that we can actually double click and it'll isolate this into a new document. This makes it super easy for us to change certain elements of the design. Also, if you're going to make templates as well. So we've got the full image here when we click in to this paper texture we can go ahead and get the full image in another document now whenever we change this document it will look different on the other document if i just write in a load of random words here and i press save it will save it just like it would do onto this document obviously you don't see the layer because it's in the smart object you can tell when the layer has a smart object on it because it has this little icon next to it like this so i'm going to write some words here i'm going to write texture and scale this up and it doesn't have to be any font really it could just be anything i'm going to scale it up quite big and make sure it falls over here because what i want it to do is look like the texture is being like sort of cut off in real life now in order to get that cut off i'm going to go ahead and highlight the paper and select it by pressing command and just clicking on that thumbnail and it will automatically select the paper and i'm going to go ahead and press the mask button and that will just mask it out and it looks a bit crazy and a bit too you know generic because we've just masked it out literally it's just a clean mask we need to right click convert to smart object then we need to mask it and because this word texture is in a smart object if we double click we can actually change this word quite a lot when you press save and you come out it will be here like so but that just looks a bit too clean we need to add some effects to this to make it work and because it's a smart object you can easily add effects to it to make this even more realistic we're going to go to filter we're going to go to distort and ripple now in filter what we want to do is make sure we only have a tiny bit of rippling going on and we can do this like so we can just drag this slide until there's just the tiniest piece of wriggling going on and you can see there with the ripple on and off it looks a bit you know untidy which is the kind of thing that we're looking for now also on this smart object we're going to go to right click and go to blending options what we want to do is sort of like take away some of the opacity of this layer and we can do this in a few ways i'm going to alt or option click this and i'm going to bring it back just slightly and this will sort of make the it work as like a paper texture and if we do this the other way around it will take away a lot of the bottom as well we may need to move this as well to get a bit more of a rough edge and this is a really good way of experimenting with different textures in photoshop but generally speaking we want it to look a bit rougher at the bottom than at the top so go ahead and play around with this and see where you get to and i'll say okay to that for now but in the ripple i'm going to add more rippling now press command save and when we come back here, you'll see that the paper texture is actually fallen in exactly where we want it. And then we can keep playing with this to make it even better in the future. You can change the background color. And all you need to do is save this 
And once you've saved it, when you come back, you double click this and double click this, you can change the letters back to texture. It will appear on this one as well. And you've created yourself a little mock-up template with typography. Again, there are many ways you can make this look more realistic. For instance, if I had more time in these videos, I'd make it a bit more textured down at the bottom. And you can do this through the blending options here. It's a fine balance. And those effects will apply to any words that you write. And you can see there the high definition quality of the mock-up. And you can do this with absolutely anything in Photoshop. It's really simple. The main aspect of creating a great mock-up or a great texture is great resources and that's why Envato Elements are sponsoring this video. Envato have literally millions of assets that you can download. The licensing to those assets are really simple as well so you don't need to worry and it's on a subscription and you can download absolutely everything. I use Envato Elements for mockups within the client work. I use Envato Elements for things like YouTube. For instance, this video, even though they are sponsoring it, they do have amazing assets on there for you. And it's super affordable for any designer to start using. They have 55 million assets. That's a lot. They've got fonts, video templates, Photoshop templates, textures like you've just seen here. So if you don't find any mockups that you like, which would be very hard to do, then you can create your own. Now, if you follow the link in the description, you can get the 50% off the annual license. So that means it's less than $20 a month to get over 55 million assets. I'm sure there's an asset for everyone out there. I'm sure there's a few thousand assets as well. So go ahead, click that link and let me know what you think. There you have it. There's the texture. I would love to see what you guys can do with it. If you guys did enjoy watching this video, please remember to press that red subscribe button down below. Ding the bell so you never miss a video when I upload one. And I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.